Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be playing Land of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse, which is an excellent game for the Master System. This is a pretty standard platformer, but it's got a bit of adventuring elements. You can see we've got the map screen here, and we're going to be going all over the place, getting items and upgrades, a little bit of backtracking here and there. This game is meant to be for the Master System. Uh, I'll be playing it on the Genesis today, since that NTSC Genesis goes a bit faster than my PAL Master System. Still the same game overall though. It's a pretty good pickup. I remember buying it for $5 from cash converters from back in the day. Believe it or not, the sticker still says $5. I can't believe it. You would not get this for $5 these days, but it's a nice little box copy and probably one of the best games on the Master System. Without further ado, let's get stuck into it. So we're gonna start out with the storyline here. Very interesting story. Mickey falls asleep while reading a book of fairy tales and somehow wakes up in the land of illusion. So our job is sort of to get back out and, you know, beat the bad boss and do all the things that you normally do on a platformer. We get these lovely text scrolls with the characters and then we get stuck into the game. So the gameplay is what I'm here for. First level is the forest stage. We get lots of different attacks so Mickey can jump and butt slam. Mickey can also pick up objects and use them to get around. You can jump up onto that tree with the bird and save yourself a bit of time climbing the vines. So the game has some cool little gimmicks. We got these wind bits here which sort of take you off and you got to avoid them. First one you're going to dodge and then the second one you can actually ride with the wind. The one really cool thing about this game is all the secret entrances. So for example here if I jump up on top of this snake I'll skip a very large chunk of the level. Normally that chunk of the level is sort of climbing the tree and getting all the way up there, but we're just going to skip that. You get a key at the end of each level and then you can use that key to get through the door. That's pretty much the gameplay loop, but we'll see when we get to the next level that gameplay loop is going to change up a little bit. So we're coming into lake stage here. Now the water is actually quite low in lake stage, so we're going to come here once with the water low and go through the bad exit so to speak. And then we're going to come back when the water's high and go through the good exit. Pretty cool premise for a game, especially back here. This is one thing I'll mention. This game did come out in 1991. So um, it's fairly new for a Master System game, really. And we'll find, and I'll point out later, it took a lot of inspiration from Super Mario World, unsurprisingly. Since that would have been the hot popular game out at the time. When you get through this tunnel, there's a bit of randomness as to when the wind comes. But basically, once it does come, you've got to grab onto the vines like so. If you don't do that, you'll get blown all the way back to the start. I'm also going to take a little bit of a safety strategy here and uh, get air back. There's not much swimming in this game, but when you do swim, it can be pretty scary because you're very close to running out of air a lot of the time, especially in this tunnel here. Just missed the door there, so we'll try again on the next cycle. There we go. The one thing you got to watch out for is the uh, treasure chests that are hidden throughout the game. If I can get out of the water, you can see there's one for example. And you can use this treasure chest to get like a little coin. Coins aren't really that useful, they just give you points. But some treasure chests that are hidden have like cake and stuff like that too. Alright, that little enemy has a key and that's going to be the level done. It is a bit scary being on two health for these earlier levels, but eventually we'll pick up some extra health in the next level. Each level has a power star in it, and um, basically 100% of this game looks like getting all the power stars. I won't be getting 100% today because it's kind of boring with a lot of backtracking, but um, it's kind of fun to do sometimes. You eventually get power-ups like this rope that lets you climb walls, and if you bring that rope into the first level, you can get the power star from the first level again. Whereas if we tried to get it in the first level now, we wouldn't be able to. Same with the second level, similar issue, you can't get the power star. Getting the power star in the second level actually requires raising that water level, so in theory when we come back in there we could grab it. There's something I always found so cool about the fire chasing you in this castle here. I don't know why, I just really like it. So 
So while we're playing through this section of the game, I'll mention the springs. So the springs you can sort of pick up and move around to where you need them. It's actually quite a big puzzle to figure out what to do with them the first time, but once you get used to where to put them, it's pretty easy. You just jump up on that one to grab the power star, and then we jump back over to get across. So this point that I'll mention this game is sort of based off Castle of Illusion. It's almost like a sequel or something like that. Um, Castle of Illusion came up first, and it was the same physics, but it was a very standard platformer. No backtracking, no power-ups or anything. It was a very good game, Castle of Illusion, but this game has a bit more depth and sort of feels a bit more like an adventure. I remember playing this game when I was a kid and like leaving it on for ages. And then for some reason when we got near the end we went out and played with water guns and when we came back I like bumped the console and then lost all the progress. Fair to say I wasn't happy that day. Although playing these games as a kid you did have to play them all in one sitting because well there's no save feature and you got to be good enough to get through the whole thing. That dragon gets taken down pretty easily with three blocks and then we talk to this dude. So this dude's going to be nice and sort of tell us that the water level's been raised for us. Alright, back to the lake. The lake's water is raised. I always think that item that you get uh, kind of looks like the Poke Flute. The item that he gave us lets you return back to a level you've already been into. Sorry, not return back. It lets you um, exit out of a level easily. You just like pause and press the item and you exit out. So this is the real exit to lake stage. You gotta have the water level raised and then get up here and go through the door. And that unlocks Castle Ruins stage. Castle Ruins is one of the first like really big, big stages in this game. Um, it's pretty tricky to get through the whole thing. It has these gimmicks where you like pick up the lantern and the room goes dark if you're not holding it and light if you are holding it. Then the other part of the gimmick is you need to use the lantern as a platform. So it's a bit of a trade off there. The really fun thing about this game is butt slamming on enemies and sort of using that damage boosting to get extra height or extra distance or something like that. But more often than not, you can cheese some of the original intended strategies just by doing that. We have this bit of the game. This bit of the game is pretty tricky to do without taking damage actually. And especially because when you throw the blocks, they sort of despawn off screen. More often than not, I like to just go through that room and take a damage anyway. It's a lot quicker than trying to deal with it. Now we got this bit which is an auto-scroller room. I absolutely hate auto-scrollers in video games. They just take so long and it's a bit draining to do it on a replay. Um, this room you sort of have to go all the way to the right, grab a key, and then bring the key all the way left. It's a bit of an interesting premise for an auto-scroller, but I like it. And so at this point you'll see just how laggy this game is. I don't know why it lags so hard during auto-scrollers, but it really does. That's unfortunately a pretty common thing. When people are pushing the limits of the master system, you're going to get things like very laggy rooms happening, and that's just the nature of it. I'd rather have a game that pushed the limits and lags a little bit and have it be impressive than not do that. There's this little trick you can do here, which I'm trying to pull off and messing up. Um, if you put the key on the switch and then sort of pick up the key as the switch is leaving screen, you'll find that the switch actually stays down the whole time. There we go. It's kind of a cool little strategy that you can use, especially if you want to make the auto scroller go seamlessly. Because obviously if you do that, you're not going to be wasting any time sort of waiting for it. This bit's kind of tense, you have to throw these blocks, but you need the key as a platform to get up to the blocks and throw them. And that's sort of a general premise with the physics in this game. Quite often there'll be a stack of two blocks and then you can't really approach handling that stack without um, either ground pounding the top one or using a platform to make it into an L shape. But there we go, that's through the auto scroller. In my opinion, that's kind of the worst bit of the game. It's good that it's not like right at the start, but I wish it was a bit later than the fourth level in. Now this boss is kind of fun, it just goes back and forth. And if you're careful enough about it, you can do the boss without really taking damage. It does spawn these fireballs, which are kind of scary, but if you just avoid them, you're fine. 
I don't know why, but I always really liked out the windows in this level, sort of the mountains in the background too. They're very comfy. There we go. Now we've beaten the boss, we're going to get the uh, mini potion. That's going to let us go mini, believe it or not. Um, so that'll let us access the next level and do it properly. So the next level here is Tiny Cavern. Now we could have gone into this level before, but we wouldn't have got very far. Basically, um, you need to go tiny to get into that little bit. And if you didn't have that mini potion, this is about as far as you'd get. Now it's got these very Mario World inspired uh, section here. Also, I really like this. If you butt slam those, you can see the whole body of those centipede things. At least I think they're centipedes. But normally you wouldn't be able to see their whole body. And like normally you wouldn't butt slam them because you'd still be mini. Alright, let's make our way through. So this level has kind of a cool feature where you go into the background. We'll see a little bit later. And we have the classic thing of enemies respawning as soon as they leave screen. More often than not, it's better to just damage boost through enemies rather than try and actually avoid them in this game. Alright, now we've got another little secret passageway. So I always to get the exact height here, but you have to sort of like jump off as Mickey. It's a bit tricky to get it perfectly, but once you get used to it, it's fine. There we go. So it's amazing that all these secret passageways are in the game, because it's pretty unlikely that you'd actually find them back in the day. Well, I guess if you were dedicated enough to the game, you'd be able to. And that's basically how you get the power star here. I think they intend you to use that rope to climb that bit and get the power star. But realistically, if you come through the secret passageway, you're fine. Alright, now we're moving up onto flower field stage. Uh, this is one of my favourites. I really like this one for some reason. It's just very calming. You can also use the leaves to get a bit of a speed boost there. Love it. And I always went mini for jumping on these things, but I don't think it really matters. Basically, if Mickey's on them, they're going to fall down, so you got to keep jumping up off them. There's also this bit. Um, I will actually get this power star just to demonstrate it. It's really cool. Basically, what you do is you ride this butterfly all the way back as mini, and then you get to the power star. It's a really cool use of not actually being able to kill the enemies when you're mini. Because, like, obviously if you're Big Mickey, you're going to kill this enemy in one bounce. But now we're just going to keep bouncing on it and getting that power star. Very comfy. As we can see here, this thing's sort of falling down as fast as it was before. So there's not really any point going mini for that one. And we get the key. So next level we're coming into is going to be Toy Workshop. Um, this is another one of those really big hectic stages. And conveniently for us, there's going to be a shortcut in this stage. So we'll check that out when we come across it. You can uh, cheese this little bit by going mini and jumping through straight away. Actually, I think... No, we don't. Um, something really comfy about these water guns as well. Yeah, so there's a secret path here. It's kind of hard to get into, but there it is. And that basically brings us to the end of the level. There we go. We've got this little claw machine. This is always a lot of fun. go. There's this glitch in the original game, Castle of Illusion, where you can like grab a door. So weird. Alright, we're gonna do this boss fight now. Luckily we got five health, so it's not gonna be as scary. It's completely random how long it spins for, so you sort of gotta be prepared for whenever it stops, because once it stops you only have a little bit of time to hit it, and then it goes spinning again. And if you're low on health or like trying not to take damage or something, it can be pretty scary trying to line it up. I 
That's the thing where if you're like speedrunning this game, you'd lose like a few seconds without any control over it. Bit weird. I always thought this guy was dressed like Luigi as well. Alright. Now he's activated the cannon to bring us to this stage here, which is the Palace Ruins. Alright, now we're in Palace Ruins. Um, so in this stage we're going to get an item called the Rope, which is going to open up the game a whole lot. At this point, once we get the Rope, we would have the option to go and backtrack and get all those other Power Stars that we missed. Um, I'm not going to grab those Power Stars just because it's a bit same-ish watching all the levels again. And we're already on 5 health anyway, so like... There's not really a whole lot of point in grabbing the power stars. I find this bit really cool. You've got to lure the rock over there, and when it explodes, you use its debris to break those blocks. A very clever use of it. I'm also going to bring up the M barrel. You technically don't need to do this. There's a little skip for it, but I'm going to do it properly just to show. Yeah, so when you bring up this M barrel, you use it to jump up that extra bit of height. But you can totally just jump up and damage boost off of the... Um, Little statues, fireballs that they spit out. Also on a little hidden chest there in case you need more health. Alright, this bit's a bit hectic. You gotta like, dodge these thwomp characters. And yeah, I said this game's inspired by Super Mario World. It's even more so in this section. Now, this is one of the coolest sections here. Um, you got this boulder enemy, and it like chases you down. It turns out this boulder enemy is just the boss of the level. We'll see in a sec. And I always bring a block into here to throw out the boss. There's something so cheeky about its grin as well. I love it. In terms of actually hitting the boss, it's kind of tricky to get the timing down, but basically you just need to ground pound that block as soon as it comes on screen and then you get it. All right, this boss drops the rope and we're going to be using that rope to climb walls. So that's why it opens up the game so much because basically we can just climb up any wall we want now and get all those hidden goodies. Instead of going and backtracking, I'm just going to go up to the next stage, which is the cliffs. Again, as with the theme on this game, we could have gone to this stage earlier, Craggy Cliff, um, but we would have just basically gotten here and had to stop. There is a power star just to the left there if you jump up and go across. Also, I really love the um, scrolling on the background in the stage. It's so impressive they pulled that off on the Master System. I don't even know how they would have done it. We'll see later on, you get a real good view of the clouds that are scrolling around. Another hidden chest there. Yeah, and this is the bit that's like really inspired by Super Mario World. With this bit, you really just have to be patient. Obviously going into mini mouse mode helps. If it wasn't hard enough, they make the room go dark as well. It'd be cruel. And there we go. Alright, I'm going to go mini to get across this gap, and that's just because we'll want this bird again to jump back across. Have a look when I go through... Ah, uh, probably not on this level. When you grab the key, the timer, like, speeds up heaps as well. I don't know why. Like, through that whole key-grabbing animation, it speeds up. It's very odd. Alright, now we're going to the desert stage. Now, this stage is very strange, because it has a normal exit and a secret proper exit. So what you're supposed to do normally is go through this stage and mess up. You're supposed to go through like the bad exit, which you just get if you go to the end of the stage. But if you go through the secret pyramid door, then there's a proper exit that you can go through. So behind this block here, 
is a little passageway which you can go through and get to the actual pyramid section. Um, you need to do that to beat the game as well. But there's characters that give you hints a little bit later on about to do it. But you can always just go to the pyramid the first time around on this level. We'll never see the normal exit of the level. In fact, it's really fun to go um, and actually play through this level normally sometimes, just because you never really see the end of this level. Um, the end of the level has this cool section with like all these sandy slopes and stuff, and it's pretty comfy. All right. Now, I reckon there's a um, hidden passageway in this bit. There we go. So the hidden passageway and the star are mutually exclusive because to get the star, you need to go up there, which means you need a jar or a key from before or something. So you basically just have to pick one or another. But since we've already got five power stars, there's not a whole lot of point. This boss is pretty easy to cheese as well. You just sort of keep bouncing on it and nothing bad ever happens. And its iframes are such that like it's perfectly spaced for when you're bouncing on it. So you can see I can just keep hitting the snake over and over by holding a full bounce. If they wanted to make that boss harder, they could have just made it invincible that tiny bit longer. Alright, that's the key in the door. Now we're going to head up to Good Princess's Castle stage. Now, I'll show you something really cool here. I wasn't sure whether I should do it or not, but basically you can skip this whole level. Um, we'll have a look. So what you got to do is you got to put the spring on the key, just like overlapped basically. And then basically what you do is you go mini and you just like keep bouncing on it. There we go. There we go, just straight up through the floor. Why would you do the whole level when you can just do that? I think they put that door there to taunt you because you like pick up the key at the start and see the door and then you're not sure how to get there but realistically we just break it. So she's given us this cool bean thing and that bean's going to grow a beanstalk on the island over here. Now we got sandcastle stage, this level we actually have to do properly, believe it or not. Getting lots of speed on that butt slam. Love it. There's something just like really fun about the physics at the start of this level, I think because you're like gaining so much speed. There's also a glitch here, um, which is called skinny dipping of all things. And like basically what it lets you do is go invisible and go through all the objects. I won't um, do that glitch here. I'll show you how to do this properly, but um, yeah, it's an interesting one. You gotta be really careful in this section not to run out of air. It can happen very easily. Basically what we're trying to do is get this switch down over here and then we're gonna come back once we've done that. These fishies are pretty brutal as well. Obviously your normal defense against those kind of things would be to butt slam them, but we don't have that as an option here. So we can see now the um, little blocks have gone down. And that lets us get through this section. As a theme on this game, it's often better to just damage boost through um, all the enemies. Alrighty. Now, if you wanted the star in this level, you'd have to climb that left wall with the rope, but I'm not going to bother getting that since we've already got max health. Alright. Now, I'm going to be very careful here. Um, these little jellyfish electrify the water. Like that. So if you jump in the water then, uh, it doesn't end well for you. Um, basically what we're going to do with this section is put that bit down with the M block. Pretty cool little puzzle in my opinion. 
And usually there's, I always forget where it is in this section, but usually there's like chests around that you can break. Obviously not now, so we're going to have to do the boss on one health. Should be interesting. <laughs> I'll probably end up dying, but we'll see. Alrighty. So basically the boss goes through a whole bunch of different cycles. Um, it'll run around for a bit. And how far it runs each time is luck as well. And pretty much what it's going to do is it's going to fire off this little tornado thing and then run around for a bit longer. Then it'll put its arms down and that's when you can hit the boss. So as long as you're patient with it, you're usually fine. It's just the boss looks vulnerable a lot of the time before you are able to actually hit it. That's the danger of this boss here. And sometimes it can just end up on top of the barrel and there's pretty much nothing you can do about it. Luckily there, it was just slightly to the right of the barrel. So realistically, those three hits on it is enough and somehow I didn't die, which is surprising. Alright, so they let us go across here, and we have one of the really cool scenes here where we plant a uh, bean to grow a beanstalk. So I'll drop that in the hole there. And it has a cool little cutscene of growing the beanstalk. I really like that. And oh my goodness, we're in the beanstalk level. So this is where the desert comes into play. You can totally get up to this level without doing the desert normally. Um, but what we unlocked when we did that special path in the desert was shoes that let you walk on clouds. And um, yeah, that's basically why we need to do that. Because you can see here with the clouds, we wouldn't be able to climb this beanstalk without walking on clouds. But I find it really fun that they let you just do the level. Um, like they let you do the beanstalk level without the cloud shoes. And just like show you that you're unable to climb the beanstalk. Rather than have a character just tell you you can't. So I like that little bit of attention to detail there. If you wanted the star, there's a little bit to the left where you just like drop down and grab it. It's sort of away from the beanstalk. If you uh, mash the button at the start of that room, uh, sorry, at the start of the map transition there, you can sort of like enter the castle early, but it glitches out a little bit sometimes. So like sometimes you'll enter the castle and then other times the game just crashes. <laughs> So it's uh, definitely don't mash during that um, cutscene of Mickey climbing the beanstalk. You may just like lose all of your progress on the game. Alright, get a little power star there just in case you didn't have five already. Now, this is one of the coolest rooms in the game, but also one of the most confusing. It's got the colored switches, so the puzzle with those, but it's also got a, like an upside down version. So if I went through that lava pool there, I'd come out, but I'd come out on the um, like mirrored vertically version of the room. So that's what we're going to be doing essentially. All right, so go through here, past all the thwomps. Sort of raise that switch. Once that switch is raised, it sort of blocks you out going through the top path. If you try and jump over it, it's not very easy. So it's best to just go through the bottom path again. What that switch did is it turned the lava into water in the left side of the room here. Alright, so let's see. There's this cool trick you can do here. I'll see if I can get it. Uh, nope. Basically, what happens is you can hit the door with the key, but the key doesn't go away. And then you just get like an extra key. But I basically got to go back here and grab this key because I missed that. Not a big deal. So we open that door, but before we go through it, we got to go and flick the colored switches again. A bit of a process to this room here. There we go. Dang. And luckily the key doors actually stay open, um, otherwise we'd be pretty screwed here. 
get that little checkpoint. Yeah, we have this evil door, which I always find so funny. Basically, what you got to do with this door is you got to lure it all the way to the right. Because once you kill it, you can just go into it. But it brings you into the other end of this room. And that pillar there was solid. Um, so you got to be to the right of that pillar when you kill the door. So you can't just, you know, go and kill the door. You have to kill it in a particular spot. All right. What that switch did that I just clicked was turn this lava into water in this room. So that's why we're able to swim in here now. There's a lot of stuff going on that if you just like watch a playthrough of this, you'll be like, why are they doing that? But it makes a lot of sense once you like play through the game yourself and look at all the ramifications. I'm going to try and swim up through this bit. No, missed it. I think that chest has cake in it. That's why I was trying to do that. Obviously, my health situation is not fantastic at the moment. You can just totally like stand behind her and cheese the um, fireballs. I think I'm going to die on this boss, but we'll just see. Yeah, she has this second phase, which is like dropping blocks from the roof. All right. second phase is not too bad like it'd be pretty unlikely that i die here but then the third phase is kind of scary the three phases also really remind me of super mario world like she sort of behaves in the same way that bowser behaves like he bounces on this third phase you just got to keep bouncing on her here Oop. almost died there all right There we go. Somehow didn't die on that boss either. <laughs> there we go. We get the crystal thing and wake up from our bad dream. And yeah, that's pretty much the whole game here. So um, it's a really, really fun playthrough. Uh, if you want more depth in that, you can always go through 100% it and get all the power stars. Um, but realistically, once you know what you're doing, it's just a platformer. But the sense of adventure you get in this game is so good. And I just really like all the backtracking and map selection and all the power-ups you get and everything. It's really cool to go back to the earlier levels with that rope power-up and climb all the walls that you couldn't climb before. Um, and it's got just a lot of depth for a Master System game. Obviously nothing compared to like a Zelda or a Fantasy Star or an East or something like that. But, you know, for the target demographic, which was primarily kids playing this, it gives a bit more depth than your standard platformers, which I really like. That's going to be pretty much all for this video. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I should hopefully have more coming out like this. I've enjoyed making this one. Um, and I got the credits play out and then leave it there.